Hey guys, I'm back. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yes, we'll have to see this second video. Um, I'm sorry I've had to cut it from like day two right up until now. My cam, like I said in the last video, my camera is not working properly and it's only recording short videos and it would be just, it would be kind of like awful just to have it like two, three, four, five every two seconds. So I'm just doing it this way. Um, so I'm going to put it back on the ship. This is the ship here. It's almost done. Um, And so the youngest person was sent out first of all to do military service in the northern Greece and Thrace. The year of Vespasian began a long and happy relationship with the army. This was his own. In Thrace, he would learn something of the arms length relationship between Rome and the army. How they must enforce power. But never threatened. The Roman Empire was beautifully conceived of wonderful architecture, stability, and for a hundred years there had been peace. And that's a fantastic political thing for free industrial society. The reason was that the army was stretched um, along the front of the empire, along the Rhine, along the Peninsula, miles, months away from central Rome. And the command of this army was split. No one was allowed to stay in post for more than three months. And the people who were most These skilled flat had to spend periods not in command, as well as periods in command. One. By all accounts, Vespasian served well in the army. Two. And at 23, he was called to Rome three. as a political posting. This was the next round. Triumvir Capitalists. I think I put it on the wrong way. Possibly in public works. A very small call in a complex and experimental machine that was always threatening to break down. Okay, I've got two. So, this part here. Probably over and over. One, two, three. And it has to have. Good on, it's just telling me. People of every race, colour, or creed would have been here hustling, dealing, looking for political favours, trading, making money. It was a poisonous hot pitch of cosmopolitan and interracial strife in many ways, but it was still terribly vital. This was the centre of the known world. He wished to get on, he had to come here. It was also a ginormous. Oh. I think if you're the left wing bone of heart, the left bit. This was not altruism. Rome was a public care. Government was about keeping the lid on it. Vespasian's main preoccupation would have been with housing and sanitation. I have one of those. I don't have two. The Romans were the first to use concrete to build huge apartment blocks. The needs of the city constantly drove forward such innovations. As triumvir, you would have seen the expansion of the most spectacular of all, the vast aqueduct system, marching at that time into the heart of Rome from all directions. Right, so we've got two of these. It was an extraordinary system. You can two imagine if you were a provincial living in a society that would hardly any water. To see something like this, striving to the countryside towards it, supplying you with non-stop water, 
24 hours a day. This aqueduct has been bringing water for 50 miles to this city. Now that is an immense project. No pumps has been involved here. Everything is done on gravity, so the Romans have had to survey the correct height to pick up the water, then survey 50 miles of building this enormous structure. It's always the skeleton of a great empire. The ruins of aqueducts are everywhere. The management of water was one of the technological triumphs of Rome, and one that she was able to exploit with spectacular results. This was hygiene, but it was more. It was recreation, a vital distraction for the city's idle crowds, along with the theatres and circuses. But all of this had to be paid for. Rome was as big as London was in 1800. It was a huge population. It maintained itself because it taxed its subjects. Why the empire was vital was because all the money collected in taxes poured into A, into Rome, and B, out to the armies on the budget. So Rome was probably the most expensive in the army. Probably took some of the best in the half in the imperial budget. But the taxes that the subjects paid were absolutely fundamental to all uh, the lavish luxuries. It's so six like, minutes again, guys. Um, I'm going to let the, the video run for another couple of minutes. Um, just because you're with me. His next appointment would make that all too clear. The third rung on the senatorial ladder was that of Quaestor, tax collector, a position of trust. As Quaestor to Crete and Cyrene in North Africa, the young Vespasian would see at first hand how Rome collected her mm. Oyster ships, there were 20, were dished out by the Senate, These two 10 were according two. to status, and the rest by lottery. Vespasian, needless to say, got his by lottery. He had drawn just about the bottom job in the factory. 20 jobs going to the ship at Quisto. And 10. Most favourites stayed in Rome. <laughs> they didn't, they didn't want to go off the provinces. And at the top of the ten, the ones who were attached to the emperor, all you could be attached to the consul, or you had various other duties in Rome. The other ten would go to the provinces. The proconsul of Crete and Cyrene, I mean, they're most of them totally unknown. David, when the station arrived from Cyrene as a young man of about 36, and he assumed the role of Christchurch, what is he getting himself into? Well, Quaestorship is a junior position for someone who's embarked on a senatorial career. And it's to give people experience of provincial government, um, starting at the, at, at the sort of nuts and bolts end of how to extract money out of the provinces. Clearly, coming to, to a settled province like Cyrene, from the he's coming into a well established urban civilization based around sedentary I think this one has to go from... Just practically doing the bottom bit now. So this is the this is the finished ship. Actually, it's not finished until the captain's sitting in it.
this is the finished ship. I am very happy, you guys, to see this, and I'm loving it already. So um, I hope you, I hope you guys enjoyed watching me build it. <coughs> and I just want to let everyone know that I enjoyed building it. So until next time, you guys, stay gorgeous. Uh, stay beautiful. Sorry, hugs and kisses. Sorry, I just love the word gorgeous, and I just want to show you this one more time for you, for you guys. Out there. But, well, before I go, I think it's, I think I've done an awesome job. I actually thought there was not going to be enough to do it, but there is. So until next time, you guys, stay beautiful. Hugs and kisses, and. Leave your comments in the box below, I'll be looking forward to hearing them and what you think of my model.